So many things to tell you about today, so many updates to do, since we have a bunch of renovation projects going on right now. So let's go around the yard and show you, of course, it's like midday today, the absolute worst time to film a video, but we do what we have to do sometimes. So first off, let's look at the backyard here. Definitely, you can see a lot of the little thin patchy areas that I showed you on that last video when I was dethatching. But the rest of the green is really starting to inch itself into those areas within the last few days or so, which today is the two week mark since I did that really heavy dethatching and removed a lot of grass out of there. So the thickness has changed quite a bit. Now the density is starting to really come back, but it's starting to spread sideways instead of just growing up every day. So. I have this kind of an interesting project going on back here, which I will reveal in another video that explains all of what I'm doing, but uh, it kind of involves mowing and I've seen some good improvement in the mowing just by doing a few things there. So I'll explain that in another video. But this section over here, right here, that's the best section because that one is now a month out from when I did the initial dethatching. Now I checked our soil temperatures the other day and we're still about mid 70s, around 75. So we haven't gotten into the peak season for fall by any means. So it's another reason why you really can't go off of the calendar necessarily to make your all of your decisions on when to apply things or when to do things. You have to just kind of look at the conditions. So it's been over two weeks now since we got any rain. And so with that dry weather, the humidity has come down quite a bit since our summer weather is not really happening as much with that humid, humid weather. And so that's sucking a lot of moisture out of the ground too. And so all of those things combined, I'm looking at the yards around the neighborhood that don't have any fertilizer normally or anything, and they have not recovered yet either, meaning that they're not going to completely look as good as a yard that has all the fertilizer done to it, but of course, naturally, in fall, when temperatures come back down, when our soil temps get to between 50 and 65 for cool season grass, that's when we're in our optimal range, and we're still above that, so I'm noticing all the lawns around here are not really looking so green yet. They still have a little bit of a summer dormant look to them. Now we have a couple of interesting things going on over here. You'll see a little patchy area right there. So about the sixth day or so, right when the grass was coming up, I had a mole come through here and start digging into this area. I've seen it in the garden now every once in a while and I've put down some kind of mole repellent in this area to keep it pushed back that way. And so far I haven't seen too much more damage yet, but I'm watching it pretty vigilantly. So that little area is really thin from that happening because grass was just starting to get going and then I had that mound and their trails through there and it kind of removed all the root system so I threw down just a little bit more seed in that area and covered it with a little bit of peat moss but it's still a little bit slow coming in yet so probably the first thing you'll notice is this little stretch right here as I mentioned my sprinkler head it's right there so it's not getting a lot of water and uh, there really should be a sprinkler head over in that other corner and for some reason when the design happened it didn't work out that way so I may end up putting in a different head here that sprays a little bit farther or maybe that head over there on that side I will have one that sprays a little bit farther or something like that I don't know yet but all of this bluegrass will start to creep into this as well as we go through probably a little bit more this fall but what I found with my bluegrass last season on the small side renovation area was that the spring after was when it really started to push itself so that's kind of what I expect with this now the midnight has been the slowest to come in by the time I saw grass coming up pretty good over on the Mazama and the blue bank the midnight was just barely kind of there at all now in the past week or so it's really started to shoot up a little more fill in a little more and it's kind of Catching up to that, it is still lagging behind just a little bit, and it is an older variety. You also may have noticed here in this midnight section, compared to the rest of it, I removed the seating blanket. And the reason for this is I will explain over in the Mazama section here, and in this blue bank section where I still have the blanket, I was getting these air pockets, and I just believe it was from getting really drenched with water, but I might have not had it pulled tightly against the ground. Whatever the case was, it was the first time I've ever used these things, 
and I think I could have done a little bit better job getting it pulled a little more tightly to the ground to begin with and then staking it in. So that's my thinking on it. I don't know if that's absolutely correct as to the reason that it's happening. And so I went out and I removed a few of them and I noticed that the grass underneath was really wanting to grow taller but it was kind of being hindered by that blanket in doing so. So I removed some of those as a test and then some of it was really stuck down to the ground like it was supposed to be and I really could not remove any of that without pulling up a bunch of the good grass. So I just decided I would leave it in place and we'll kind of compare the blanket area versus the non-blanket as we go as well. I still believe that essentially I would not have these results right now without that blanket at the beginning because all the rain that we got in that time frame would have washed things away. I have no doubt about that. I had it happen out in the front three different times and the area where I kept the blanket I had seed hold in place and grow in. The area that I did not, as you saw, I reseeded three times. This right here you can tell is stuck to the ground. You can see I can pull on it and it stops really right at that point. So I just come in and rip this out. And there's grass stuck to that one so I'm not going to do that. Grass stuck to this. I believe that when I mow over this, um, if I did use a rotary, it would probably rip some of this stuff up for me too. But I'm trying to come in here and be gentle with it at the beginning. So on camera I think it truly looks like there's nothing growing in these brown areas and that's just not the case. So where I ripped out those areas of the blanket, we have really tall grass coming up now. If this whole area were like that, I would have been mowing already for sure because we're probably at two inches at least on those areas. The other ones with the blanket, it's not growing as much up as I'm seeing every single plant start to leaf out and stay kind of lower. So instead of putting its energy into growing these single strands of grass that are very thin and wispy like some of these tall areas, it's staying closer to the ground and pretty much every single plant down on these brown areas that look like there's nothing there, they are a plant now that has four or five leaves on them and they're growing out sideways instead of these other ones on those bubble areas that are just single strands of grass that have grown up to two to two and a half inches or something. So kind of an interesting thing there. I think long term I would rather have the root growth happening right now of those little small sections where the blanket is at, but I don't see that either of them is going to be an issue long term. It's all still growing and nothing is washing away anymore. We have enough grass here established that I'm not worried about any of that. You also notice here you'll see all these little black spots here. That's actually worm castings and they've been really going crazy over in this area. It's pretty much everywhere. Good movement in the soil, good things happening there. So remember and also you'll see in the shot here that this is getting nearly all day shade. This section right here by the house is a little bit uh, thinner as well because we're not getting really any sunlight on it until about five o'clock at night and then the sun's going down now by eight for sure more like 7 30 so it's only getting two and a half hours something like that and i don't expect it to go crazy this season yet i expect those sections back there which are getting much more sun to do a little bit better but that's the reason why I put the Mazama where I did because I know that this section on the north side of my house is the only real shaded area that I have consistently in my yard. And I wanted to test that grass type, which is supposed to be pretty shade tolerant and see how it does. So overall, I'm very happy with the progress so far. I haven't grown straight bluegrass since I did the backyard in 2012, so I'm kind of having to remember to set my expectations as well that we're not 10 days into it right now with a full yard that we can mow like I have had with ryegrass in the past. And so set your expectations, know that this is only going to get better with time, and as long as you have enough grass there started in this fall. We have plenty of time yet even left here in this season to grow this in a little bit more. Next spring will be a really good time to really push this in and we'll be doing some fertilizing yet this fall here starting to hopefully mow it. I'm hoping um, within the next few days I'll be able to come in and do at least a little bit of mowing on it and that'll also start to push the growth too. So here we have the front yard. The ryegrass has been my friend once again because it's come in. This is day 10 today. Um, I've let it dry out a little bit today because I knew I would be walking on it, so that's not really typically what I would love to do, but if I know I'm going to walk on it and mow, 
and I will let it dry out a little bit here. So this is the manual reel. I know you've seen it in quite a few videos before and the reason that I got it last year I just decided it would be easier to cut because although we do have one roller on the back here for stability which does help so that you don't fall into any of the little holes in your yard. On the front here we don't have any roller like my swordman does so when the grass comes through here it's not being rolled down first. I am back in business here with the ryegrass first mow. So just a few days ago, remember it looked like this. And here we are today. So for the first few mows here, if you have something like that, I bought that on Craigslist for like $50 or something. Um, I, I like using it. I'm also reminded why I like using it instead of my good reel is the peat moss has a little bit of kind of chunks of stuff in it sometimes, a little bit of bark, those little kind of twigs and stuff and I hit those every once in a while with this thing and I'm I'm not nearly as worried about doing a little nick in this blade for $50 as I am to my swordman so that was another reminder to myself why I do like using that manual reel too because the taller grass you really can't see what's down in there and I cut on the lowest setting today that is an inch and an eighth there's a few thin spots here the heaviest spots that I leveled so no big deal with ryegrass throw some more seed on it, keep throwing seed on any of the thin spots that you see. Obviously not piles of it, but broadcast a little bit in there. And as we get rains here this fall, as we continue to mow over everything, I won't worry about damaging any of that. That new seed will come in and it will just start to fill in that section. So just keep finding those spots that are very thin like that, throw out more seed. Now I just don't know how well this is gonna show on camera, but the only downside to those manual reels, especially setting them at the lowest settings, or that you'll get this real choppy wavy look and so you'll see this through this section here there's kind of like a little bit of a ripple look to it and that is caused from the fact that we don't have the reel spinning fast enough really for how thick the grass is so it just had a hard time going through that thick grass on the lowest setting and the reel is just not spinning fast enough to really get rid of that ripple but it doesn't really do any damage to it by any means it just has that kind of rippled look right here we've got just a little bit of excess grass too i'll just come in with my blower and i'll take care of that no problem so you'll see in here in this section that we have good growth coming in but i did remove the seating blanket the reason for that was that of course since i put down the seating blanket it has not rained and therefore it was actually kind of impeding my watering from going down into the ground very much because it kind of needs a heavier rainfall to get that thing to suck down and these sprinklers don't have a very heavy impact type water to them they're lighter so it wasn't working that great in this section and what i noticed was that last video where i showed you that the blanket had worked in order to get germination started it definitely did work but i noticed that it was still able to be kind of pulled off of the ground and i didn't really want to have the air bubble situation again so i just decided at that point to pull it off of there and just let it be what it is we have enough grass here that if we should get a storm i've got way more than germination happening it's already growing quite a bit so you will see the sections of green that are much thicker and then the lighter sections so this is actually the lack of consistent watering with the irrigation system. I have been watching this and with the blanket and also with the bare soil, you could definitely tell where it was getting heavy water, where it was getting light water. And as you notice, the seed has come up here where it's thin is exactly from the watering. And you might think that an irrigation system with head to head coverage is going to be perfect. But from what I'm finding, that just does not seem to be the case. So. Out against the street there, there's some lighter stuff. Definitely in between these two heads on this section, there's a section there in the middle where it's getting more water. These two are getting lighter water, and I'm noticing it also on the other boulevard area. So watered this yesterday a half an inch, 
and you will still see I have my polarized sunglasses on right now so it's easier to see but I don't know if it's going to show on camera there's a section right through here the section right back in there as well that you can see it's still kind of a little bit wilted that's from again the lack of consistent coverage even though we have head here head right in the middle and head on the end definitely getting head-to-head -head coverage and it's just not hitting these little sections perfectly so I'll have to come in and water those by hand a little bit but one interesting thing that I wanted to make sure to mention with the way that the system has been working for me so far. I know that was a lot of explaining to do today, but I wanted to talk about some of the little things that were going on and kind of in detail the little things that I've been seeing since we did the renovation. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. We'll see you next time.